Welcome to The Popish Plot. I'm Jessica, and today I'm going to be telling the story of how I picked my confirmation saint. You already heard from Nate in his not picking a saint, and Mike in his picking the most obvious choice. And so, you already noticed before, probably, that I stated I had rules. So I will go over what rules I picked, or what info I used to pick my confirmation saint. One... There is no Saint Jessica. You can look online and they'll be like, technically Joanne means Jessica. But no, Jessica is a name that was invented by Shakespeare and most scholars now think it probably was an attempt to understand what the Jewish people of uh, London were saying as a name that was like the name of Sarah's sister. So it wasn't Joanne. And I've looked it up and I promptly forget it every time. It's one of those things where it's like, if I squint and I imagine speaking with a, a Shakespearean accent, I could kind of see how those two things came apart, but they're not particularly close. And although my middle name is a saint's name, my middle name was chosen because it's my mom's middle name. And I'm pretty sure she was named after her aunt. So it was more a family name than any, you know, devotion to this particular saint. So I had the dogs in the background being all cute and fluffy. That's what the jingling is. So I had a few simple rules for who I was going to pick. One, it had to be a name that I could pronounce and spell, which cut out a huge chunk of names because there are a lot of saints' names that you've seen me stumble over on the show or it's just one of the guys go and say or is originally written in a different language so you get the rough idea of what it is in English but it's not completely, you know, correct. So all those were out. Number two, I don't know if it was explicitly stated or just very, very heavily implied, but the parish I grew up in was rather on the, the we still do the 1980s song level of traditional. So it wasn't, you know, like everything's in Latin. So it was super strict in the modern word traditional thing of girls had to pick girl saints and boys had to pick boy saints. And the fact that historically throughout church history, that is not how people went. And I know various, you know, religious sisters who were, you know, sister James, John, etc. because you could pick any saint you want. It, it was either outright stated or pretty much stated. You had to pick someone your same gender, which super limits the list when you have to be a female who's, I can say, there was, of course, the Teresa's. 90% of my confirmation class for females were some form of a Teresa. Or Therese. And then, of course, you could do the various people who are named after Mary. But for my third rule, I wanted to have someone who, who was in some way cool. And not just doing one of those Teresa's or Therese's. Although, reading some of their stories, they were cool. But, you know, I was like 12, so... Super not cool to spend your life being super holy and then dying being super holy. So I'm like, what's really cool? Princesses. So I went and looked for princess saints. So there's Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, which got points because she performed miracles in her lifetime. And also I am up to a quarter Hungarian. So it's like technically a patron saint for me. You know, in the general, you know, your country thing. There's her cousin, St. Elizabeth of England, who was also an Elizabeth saint. There was her great niece, St. Elizabeth of Portugal, who wasn't, you know, I didn't know pretty much anything about her, so she wasn't there. And then her probably distant rel relative, because she was related to Queen Victoria, and by the time Queen Victoria was around, all the royals were related, so it's probably there somewhere, of St. Elizabeth of Russia, because she's an Orthodox saint. So, so, I, I had a lot of Elizabeths to choose from. And then I found another one who technically wasn't a princess. She was the daughter of a chieftain, but she has the same gets to be named of her country, of St. Bridget of Sweden, who had bonus points in that one of the stories I read about her was one time there was this priest who was, you know, totally not following his priestly vows, which was vaguely stated because it was in a book for children. And because he refused to repent, he got zapped by lightning after she told him to repent, which is super cool. <laughs> and also, if you know anything about the religious order founded by her, 
they have these super neat like crowns that they wear over their habits. They're they're very medieval because it's just like a ring of metal over your head, but still, e even their nuns wear you know crowns. So that's why I went with Saint Bridget of Sweden. Very very deep reason, on par with any of the guys' reasons. Now, ha having you know lived you know, a long length of time since that point. There are many reasons why she would be a good fit for me. She was a wife. She was a mother. She happened to be part of the group that went and yelled at the Pope to get back to Rome, which is always cool. Not as cool as lightning, but still pretty cool. <laughs> you know, she, she had a booklet I have, which is of her visions, which are the normal type of medieval visions you have, where it's like super hardcore pious -y, you know, spent a lot of time repenting stuff, because she was, you know, in, in that era, but still. That's why I picked my saint. And I, I probably, you know, could probably come up with some story about uh, some time in my life when it just, you know, it was like totally perfect. That's why she's my saint. But I did not think of any at the moment, and it's very hot, and it's summer, and that's why we're doing Summer of Saints, so maybe come fall when it cools down, if I can think of some great point in time, I, I, I will. I mean, currently all I have is Middle Child happens to be named the same name as her daughter, and decided that she also wanted a princess saint. So technically, my patron saint, officially, is the mother of my Middle Child's unofficial patron saint. Anyway. Do you have equally silly rules that you picked for picking a confirmation saint? Go down below and, and, and comment on them. Maybe in an inverse, no one was named Teresa in your class. And you're like, what do you mean everyone was Teresa? I mean, there was, I believe, another Bridget that was Bridget uh, of Keldeer. And I want to say one other, like, just random obscure saint that I have no idea who it is. But besides that, mostly Teresa's. And while you're down there, hit the like, hit the subscribe so you can learn more about saints besides whether or not they might have technically been princesses. And until next time, remember to live your faith, love your faith, and share that love. Princesses. <laughs> I think your rules make a lot of sense. I mean, number one is right up there with the most duh. <laughs> I'm not going to pick St. <laughs> no, Athanasius. <laughs>